Hey, you clicked on this video. I know what you're here for. You want to learn how to install vinyl plank flooring. You mean like this stuff right here? You're talking about this type of flooring? Step number one, of course, is to make sure that vinyl plank flooring is right for you. It's waterproof, it's easy to install, low maintenance, and it looks great. So yes, this is the floor we're gonna be installing today. Obviously it's already installed, but I'm gonna go back about a few weeks and show you how I did it start to finish. Starting with step two. Step two is to choose your floor. Make sure you choose something that's in your budget and the style that you like. And make sure you buy enough. Here's the formula for figuring out how many boxes you need. You should always add an additional 10% under your square footage and then buy an extra box. In this case, we needed 11 boxes. And if anyone's wondering, we went with Dovetail Oak and Style Select sold at Lowe's. And here's my adorable daughter that helped me to push the cart that day. Now that we have the flooring home and we need to move it inside, it's important to know how to move it. And it's not this way. Instead, if you have access to a two-wheel cart, I'd recommend that instead. This way, you're able to move multiple boxes of flooring at a time. In this case, I was able to fit three of these boxes on the two-wheel cart, and I was able to move three boxes into my garage at a time without straining my back whatsoever. You can buy a flooring installation kit like this if you've never done it. It comes with your spacers, a tapping block, and a pull bar. You actually don't need all this. The only thing we're really gonna be using out of here today is the spacers. Now, depending on what type of flooring you have currently, you're gonna have to remove it. In this case, I have carpet. So since I don't wanna move all my furniture out of the room at once into the hallway, I am just moving everything from one side of the room to the other. And then I'm going to be removing the carpet in two sections rather than one. And be on the lookout for my next video, which is actually going to be about removing carpet and making it insanely easy. Pro tip, make sure you have a very, very sharp blade when you are removing carpet. It just makes it that much easier. Now that you have the carpet out, you're going to be left with all these staples with padding stuck to them and of course your tack stripping, which of course is a pain to get rid of. But I'm going to show you my way of getting rid of this stuff easily. You're going to need a floor scraper, a shingle stripper, and a broom and dustpan. All you got to do is hold it at a 45 degree angle and look at that. Just scrape those staples right up. You don't got to get on your hands and knees and go around and pull everything out by hand. You could literally just go through this and do it within 30 seconds. And all you do is sweep it up when you're done. Next, I'm gonna be showing you how to get tack stripping up super easily. And this is where the shingle stripper comes in handy. You literally just do this. You just make prying motions with the shingle stripper. It comes right up, no hands and knees. If you have any nails still sticking up, just hammer them down. Here I am cutting back the caulking between the wall and the baseboard because I am actually removing my baseboard for this and replacing my baseboard once the floor is in. You don't have to do this. You can reuse your baseboard or you could floor up to the baseboard and then put cord around to cover the gap. It is totally up to you. But if you're going to remove trim, I recommend using this tool that I'm using in the video right now. It is called a trim remover. I can't remember who makes it, but it really makes quick work and it doesn't damage the wall. In tight areas like this, you may have to use a flat bar. Just be careful not to damage your drywall. Now it's time to have some fun and install our flooring. So bring in your boxes and quickly, I'm gonna explain how these go together. You're gonna to have a female edge that is going to be on the right hand side and then you're going to have a male edge and these are how they click together and stay together. Here I am putting spacers and as you can see, sometimes they like to fall down. So pro tip, use some painter's tape, tape them to the wall, then you won't have to deal with that issue. The reason you should use spacers for your first row is so that you have a perfect expansion gap between the wall and your floor for expansion and contraction. I always recommend cutting off a scrap piece of the baseboard you will be using just to make sure that the gap isn't too much that it's not gonna be covered by your trim. 
Now we're just going along and installing our first row. Uh, we're using spacers the whole way along this first wall and we're just tapping the pieces together. You always want to just start with getting your first row in to make sure everything's squared up and is looking nice. In this case, we have a pretty square wall to work with. Always make sure to undercut your door jams and your casing so that you could slip the flooring underneath and not try to cut around it. And to do that, you take the scrap piece of flooring and then you would actually go around and cut it out with the oscillating tool to get the thickness right. And then you are actually able to slip your piece of flooring underneath there and you don't have to cut around it. And here I am just tucking this piece of flooring under the existing transition strip. Okay, we're at the end of our row and we need to cut a piece for here. Instead of measuring with a measuring tape, you could just lay a piece of flooring across this gap up to the wall. And as you can see, the male end that is supposed to be connecting over here at the female end is actually over against the wall. This is so that we have the proper edge for when we make our cut. And then you just mark where the two planks meet. Put a straight edge on your mark, take a sharp utility knife and score a line and then you can just snap it with your hand and that's how you cut vinyl plank. As you can see, that fits and we didn't need to use a measuring tape. Here you see me using a scrap piece of flooring to pound this into place so that I don't ruin the edge. First row done. Now we're gonna start a new row going from left to right. Here's how you install the pieces together. You install the long edge first and slide it over to where the short edges are lining and you just pop it in with a mallet. I recommend using a white mallet so it doesn't mar up your floor. Make sure you always stagger your joints. A good rule of thumb is to make sure that your joints are at least the distance away of the width of one of your boards. Now install your flooring from left to right, just like I'm showing, starting a new row every so often and making sure that your joints are staggered. All right, we have this half of the room done. We are looking good. Time to move everything back over. All right, after doing some life-size Jenga with all the furniture, and moving everything to the other side, to the finished floor, we can rip out this carpet now. We are installing flooring in this bathroom as well, so I'm going to be removing my toilet, and that is a separate video. If you're able to, I always recommend removing your doors because it just makes the flooring installation that much easier. You don't have to, but I always recommend doing this. Okay, now it is time to remove the linoleum from my bathroom so that I could bring it down to the subfloor so that the flooring could be the same height throughout. And as you can see here, I have linoleum with two layers of Luan underneath. And unfortunately, there was a little bit of mold underneath, so it's a good thing that we're removing this anyways. So I had a little bit of a mold situation going on in my bathroom, so I decided to throw some bleach on it and let it dry. Here's a pretty common situation. You have a TV cable coming out from the floor. What you do is you cut your length first of the floor, obviously, and then you line it up lengthwise, make your mark on the edge of the board, and then you line it up widthwise, mark it there, and then you just use your speed square to find where both of those lines intersect, just like this. Then you're gonna wanna find a drill bit that is big enough to allow the head to go through, and you just drill that out with a spade bit 
or really any bit that's big enough. And then you can just slide it through and that's all you gotta do. Okay, so now we have to cut around this door jam. So we're gonna line it up and we are going to mark where it is going to fit snugly underneath the door jam. And we're kind of doing this the same manner that we did that cable. And then we just basically find where those intersect and make a little box. And we cut that out with a jigsaw. I recommend using a jigsaw for this if you have one. And uh, sorry about my arm being in the shot. And if you have your door jam undercut, like I showed you earlier, it should slide right underneath and boom, that is magic. Okay, this is kind of a unique situation, but obviously we can't just fit it in there because of that door casing in the way. So we're actually going to make use of this open space here. And then we're just going to slide it over into place using a scrap piece to tap it into place so we don't mess up the edge. And there you go. Okay, next, to cut around a toilet flange, you basically just lay it on top and then beat it with a mallet, and it's gonna leave a perfect marking there for you to cut out around the toilet flange. Okay, so you've made it to the opposite wall from where you started, and you realize your pieces won't fit anymore, so you need to rip it down widthwise. Here's how you do that. You're just gonna line your piece of flooring up with the edge of the previous row. Now you take a scrap piece that has the full width available. Length doesn't matter here. As long as you have the full width, you're gonna place that in between the wall and the piece that you were trying to cut. And you see that's gonna overlap a little bit. That's good. We're gonna take our Sharpie and we're going to mark that. And then we're going to slide the piece against the wall. And this is going to give us our perfect measurement. Let's see how it fits. And that is perfect. In this case, you might need to use a pull bar just to tap it into the groove like this. I showed you this tool at the beginning of the video. You don't need this. If you have a flat bar, that'll work just fine. Just make sure you place your flat bar where there's not studs so you don't ruin your drywall. Okay, so now we have to cut around an air vent. So you basically just mark the edges of the air vent and you measure the width of the vent and then you just translate that measurement onto your board like this. and then you cut it out. Pretty easy stuff. Now I always recommend caulking the gap between your flooring and the tub. This extreme stretch by DAP is pretty good. You always want to cut out your old caulking from where the old flooring met the bathtub. And then apply a fresh bead. You can put it on nice and thick if you want. And pro tip, take a water bottle and spray where your bead of caulking is. And then when you spread it, it's not going to get all over your floor or your bathtub. And then you just wipe it on a wet rag. Looking good. All right, now I'm just gonna reinstall all of my doors. Congratulations, you have installed vinyl plank flooring. Told you it wasn't that hard. If you would like more tutorials like this in the future, please make sure to let us know and let us know what you'd like to see next. We got more coming your way. Thanks. Mm -hmm.